for you. We have a great guest now from uh, Edmunds.com, right? Yes. Uh, <laughs> hi, uh, Gregory uh, Rokita, is that how you pronounce your name? Uh, he's the director of software architecture at Edmunds. You guys know Edmunds, right? Every time you go buy a car, you hit Edmunds and you try to figure out, you know, what the invoice cost is, what other people are paying, what features are. You mix and match. It's a fantastic uh, website. So welcome to the Cube. Yeah, so uh, get nice and close here so the sure. audience can hear you. So now, um, uh, let's see, Gregory, why don't we start, tell us a little bit about, a little bit more about Edmonds and sure. what your role is there, and then we'll get into what you're doing with Hadoop. So Edmonds is the largest website uh, to empower consu automotive consumers to make decisions. Uh, we provide a plethora of information about cars and vehicles, uh, year, make, model information, options, colors, uh, and pricing. So. When people go to our site, they're able to, um, to, to find the best deal. Uh, we can direct the consumer to, to the dealers, and we try to help them as much as we can in their purchasing decision. Right, and Edmonds makes money, what, through a combination uh, of advertising and referrals? Yes, or? Advertise, advertising referrals, and we're pursuing right now a tier three, which is um, direct dealer relationships. Great. So that's, that's a big effort that we're currently um, 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 you know, trying to pursue. As I, as I say, uh, it's a very useful service. Many of us, if not most of us, use it. Um, talk about your data challenge. Sure. So we had a, we had a really great talk yesterday, um, and we had a lot of great questions afterwards. And the message that I try to communicate to people is that the technology changes so rapidly, and also the other fact is that uh, the new data stores and the new applications come up so rapidly that you have to position yourself to take advantage of those things. So when Hadoop and HBase came along and we decided, well, we need to use it for our business analytics, we were like, how do we do it? Uh, but we already invested so much time in our publishing architecture that allows us to move the data from the source system to the destinations that we kind of were able to do a plug and play. So we didn't have to invest a lot of effort in, into um, in taking advantage of the new technology. So I would, I would, you know, I would give advice to others: uh, take take care of your integration. You know, take care of the the system that allows you to move the data easily with your enterprise. So, take us through that. I mean, how did you sure. do that? So obviously, you have a, you right. know existing system, and right. you know one of the beautiful things about Hadoop and HBase, as you mentioned, it's it's new. I mean, a couple of years ago, yes. you, when you architected your system, you yes. had you know other technology. So exactly, take us walk us through that yeah. process. So we before even we started use using Hadoop and HBase, um, we we try to separate our data sources from our uh, destination uh, applications. So instead of using um, databases on the, on the website, we, we try to use more modern technologies like Coherence and Solar. And instead of doing a tight coupling between our source database and our uh, destination, uh, which caused a lot of problems, we, we invest a lot of effort in our publishing infrastructure. So, uh, we were able to publish our source data independently into different destinations. So when Hadoop came along and HBase came along, we just pretty much reused that, that, that system to, to populate the data into those, um, into those destinations. Um, so you hear from yeah. Mike Olson and others, sure. Amar, Amar Adela was in the cube yesterday, basically one of their design objectives was you could drop in Hadoop into your existing IT infrastructure. Exactly. And I heard that and I said, hmm. I wonder if that's real. So you're a practitioner. Yes, and uh, and that that just that just sped our development dramatically. I mean, uh, you know, before we used to we used to spend months developing reports, and now it, it's a matter of weeks. So we were trying we, we we spent a lot of effort to make it generic in a way where where the new data set comes along, we can just pull it in easily into the, you know, Hadoop and HBase. So so part of the effort was how do we how do we make our development agile. And a lot of people say, well, data warehousing is not really agile. It's really hard to apply. It's kind of arcane technology. But once you bring Hadoop into the, the picture, you realize that your data warehousing uh, and business intelligence becomes kind of like another, um, another regular development platform. And you can take advantage of a more agile uh, methodology. So you're saying in a way that Hadoop has um, agilized your existing yes. EDW, really? Exactly. Exactly. Does, uh, can you give us some more detail on that? Because um, I, I have the same reaction. You know, enterprise yeah. data warehousing, it's cobbled together, yes. it's slow, yes. it's hard, it's, every, it's painful. I, I'll tell you another anecdote. So we, we're actually hiring people, and we had this job description that had a lot of like ETL terms and kind of data warehousing, and we didn't get much traction. 
So we're like, well, what, 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 let's let's just rewrite it a little bit. Let's you know add a little bit of spice to it. And like, so we put like big data, you know, Hadoop, and all of a sudden we get all those resumes, and it's the same job, you know. <laughs> so <laughs> it's like, uh, you know, those little things and image sometimes, but. I mean, but it's, it's cool. not I mean, just there's that. There's a cool yeah. factor with Hadoop yeah. because you know, people want to be on the cutting edge. Yeah. But uh, we talked with uh, the guy from Hadap, from Yale University. He said it's really cool because you can talk about theory and then build it fast. Yeah. So people want that in this new market. Yeah, exactly. And uh, it, it How many just, people did you hire? <laughs> uh, well, we're just getting a lot of resumes, so <laughs> <laughs> we're going through the process. <laughs> but <coughs> you're lucky. A lot of people are trying to find that, and it's hard to find these data scientists now. And are you yeah. finding the same kind of challenge with data science? Um, to us, it's 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 trying to kind of align that you know the data warehouse with with other kind of groups within the company that already moved past, and and we're able to kind of take advantage of those you know agile approach and uh, you know design thinking approach um, Edmonds is kind of trying to stay stay on top of the like the latest and greatest in, not only in the technology but also in the way we we do process so for us it's not just the technology it's also the process and if you if you kind of structure your process in the right way you can have a better way you can take advantage of the technology in a better way what are some of the benefits you're getting out of this new system on the analytics you mentioned uh, with HBase and, and Hadoop. yeah the other great difference uh, compared to our previous system that we used is just uh, the fact that because we can load the data so much faster and we can query the data so much faster, uh, we allow our business analytics to be way more productive. Um, so we integrate our Hadoop with, uh, with Netiza and what that allows us to do is we can do queries that before couldn't even finish. Not only they, they were not taking a long time, they couldn't even finish. So, so our business analytics is way more productive. We can deliver reports way faster than we did before. Um, um, and uh, can, you, can you describe what wasn't delivered or you couldn't get the queries? What specifically were you doing? Sure. So we were we we were using um, previously we were using Oracle to a greater extent, uh, Oracle Rack, and there were some. Uh, 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 I mean, we we get a lot of data, um, especially from our logs. It's a billions of of rows a month. Well, maybe not billions, but um, close. Uh, so once the data grows to a specific side, size, I mean, you, you, certain queries will not will not be able to, to perform or even finish. So um, by our integration of Hadoop and Netiza, we were able to actually uh, not only bring the load and query time down, but also able to execute queries that we were not um, uh, possible previously. H how much data are you managing? Um, we. Uh, we currently aggregate about two terabytes a month. Uh, so we, we aggregate all of our structured data, like vehicle data, vehicle information, uh, pricing, uh, dealer information, inventory, uh, and also unstructured data, which is the data that comes from clicks from the website. So, um, 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 and also leads, so like the referrals, what you, um, um, to um, dealers. So we're talking hundreds of yeah. terabytes. Yeah, and another 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 thing is that we were able to bring all of our data sets into one data store, which is HBase. And previously that was not uh, possible for the company. Um, we had Solar, we have Coherence, we have relational databases for structured data, but um, the flexibility of HDFS and, and HBase allow us to bring all of the, those structured and unstructured data sets on, on, under one roof and allows us to, d to develop applications that were previously not possible we can, because we can relate all this information. We can correlate the lead information to the dealer information, to the clicks information. So it's, it's, it's a really powerful concept, I would say. So I'm interested in this relationship between the sort of traditional enterprise data warehouse and these new emerging Hadoop applications. Do you see them as sort of growing together? Kind of like the, the gentleman at J.P. Morgan Chase showed yesterday, he showed a very interesting chart and there's that debate over yeah. what that's going to look like in the future. What do you think it's going to look like? Uh, give us your prediction. I, I can't really predict the future, but I know that, that new technologies will, will be emerging. And, uh, and, and going back to my previous point is position yourself to the fact that you will have to integrate with new technologies. So um, it's, it's possibly it's going to be Hadoop and HBase, but it's, it's quite possible that another startup is going to come along and develop something great. 
And uh, so don't try to predict. Don't your, try to predict. Your, is your message. But predict yeah. that change will happen. I mean, yeah. that's that's the best way to position and, yourself. And prepare for that. Prepare for that. Make make your systems um, uh, easily integratable with with the new and future applications. What's your take on this event, uh, Hadoop World, 2011? It's pretty dynamic. Um, so I want to get your impression of kind of what's sure. happening here, but also talk about how you guys are staying on top of everything. I mean, we're seeing new stuff come out like Mahout and other components. Uh, you got Hortonworks competing with Cloudera. Um, yeah. You got to run your business. You've got a good solution with Hadoop. Uh, so what's the vibe here? What's your opinion of, of the show and the ecosystem? And then really? how do you stay on top of it? Um, I mean, I think it's great. I mean, um, w as you said before, it, it's it's going more mainstream. Um, people are taking notice uh, from different uh, industries. Um, they're interested. They ask really great questions. Um, um, the the nice thing about uh, what Cloudera is doing is that um, all those components work together, and uh, we don't have to worry about versioning issues. And so we're using, for example, Uzi, you know, for our job coordination. And uh, it works way better than the, the systems that we did before, like OEM and cron jobs. So, um, and um, I, I think I think the fact that uh, there's so much momentum um, adds to the uh, adds to the value because developers feel like they they're learning systems that are useful that they can kind of rely on the future. You know, Gregory, so. we've been having a discussion this week about, of course, you know, we're, we're we love the the marketing wars, right? And yeah. Horton Works comes in and right. you know EMC last May. Um, and generally speaking, I think our conclusion was that, um, that Cloudera is open, obviously, mm -hmm. uh, open enough. Now there's a management console which is not open, it's a proprietary console. Yep. And there's a discussion that we've been having, and I'd like you to weigh in as a practitioner, sure. uh, which is a, a, the lock-in question. So you, at s the, the theory, the premise mm -hmm. is at scale, mm -hmm. if you are processes are tuned to or tied to a management console that's proprietary, you're yeah. going to have, your switching costs are going to go up. Does that concern you as a, as a buyer? Um, in practice, admins is actually currently not using uh, um, those tools. Um, we actually develop our in-house uh, chef provisioning, which allows us to manage our cluster, and uh, so it's still open source. I don't find it to be too concerning myself. Um, I'm kind of Thinking about the way Cloudera uh, put themselves in a position where it's um, the easier you make it for people to use your system, the less incentives they have to to use your other solutions. So it's kind of they're in a in a little bit of a position of um, I wouldn't say uneasiness, but uh, it's a tricky position to be in, and they have to be careful kind of how to position certain products to be open source versus not. But I guess it's their problem to solve, and, uh, and I'm sure they'll do a great job of it. Well, and your that. point, if I understand your point, it's yeah. if, a, if, a, if a sales rep comes knocking on your door and yeah. says, hey, will you buy this? You say, well, no, I'm, I'm getting all this stuff for free, right. and I have my own homegrown management yeah. system, I'm good. Yeah. So Cloudera is not currently deriving revenue yeah. from Edmunds, is that um, correct? Uh, currently not. Oh, okay. uh, but I mean, yesterday there was this talk on, on Weeby Data, which I, I believe it's, it's one of the Cloudera projects, and they, they tried to add value, and um, someone asked about licensing costs, and they, they haven't figured out yet mm -hmm. what the licensing for that component is going to be, but it's going to be part of the Cloudera distribution, which you know, um, which gives you the advantage of versioning and all this stuff. So I'm sure they'll figure a way to to provide additional value to people uh, at the same time make money. Yeah, absolutely. So um, yeah. Okay. Well, we're here with uh, Gregory Rokita, who's uh, with Edmunds.com, talking about uh, the use cases. Um, uh, my last question is, um, you've given some advice to, to users, but let's say you're a, a practitioner that really hasn't gotten into Hadoop mm -hmm. at all. You're he maybe here, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I think they, uh, Mike said two thirds of the people here were actual users. Let's say you're one of those who's just kicking the tires. What would your advice to be uh, to, to people who are just getting started? I think at the beginning, the, the cost of entry might seem kind of overwhelming to people um, because even simple things like setting up a, a cluster might, might, be, uh, uh, might be too much for certain people. So if you, if you have a strong technology team, I would say uh, go for it. Um, um, you might need some help at the beginning uh, from outside, but uh, I think it's really worth taking. Um, um, so. Uh, my advice is to uh, be open-minded and do not, 
and take advantage of the fact that you will have different use cases and different applications for different purposes. So uh, position yourself in a way where you can, where you can take advantage of that. Excellent. Well, Gregory, um, fantastic use, use case. Uh, really appreciate you taking time and coming My on theCUBE and sharing with our audience uh, what's going on at Edmonds, and good luck with your, your projects. Thank you very Great much. Great to meet you. Okay. Great, to meet Great to meet you. Thank Take you. Care.